There are people who attack him and state, even if what you're saying is true, you shouldn't talk about it because it might be damaging to society. This concept of like any time there is a discussion of intersexual dynamics. And when you, when you look at evolutionary psychology, one of the things you're going to find is that it makes both genders look bad. It makes us look like hairless murder apes. It calls into question the idea of free will. There's a lot of bad results that happen from like really, not bad, but like society would look at some of these results and be like, that's ugly. So for instance, if I show that women who cheat in relationship have 230% the sexual partners of women who don't, that's not mm -hmm. a result that a lot of feminists want to hear. Meaning like oh, yeah. you being a bad bitch actually has a discernible statistical disadvantage in marriage that's not what mm -hmm. women want to hear and no. so when you do those things people get very upset and they don't want uh, they don't want to you know be a part of this discussion or they want to cancel this discussion and yeah, so they just call you names exactly they call you names and so the word that i'm seeing that's happened before like for instance people who don't agree with democrats on racist on racial theory are immediately called racists and mm -hmm. men who do not conform to what women think is normal on social media are at least called icky or creepy right what yeah. i found is mm -hmm. that when men talk about these concepts when i criticize men no one has anything to say about it no one yeah. when i criticize men no one Naturally. has a problem with it no men don't have a problem with it women men are used to being criticized we don't no one has a problem with it when i use the exact same level to criticize women then the word incel comes up just like creepy or ick or racist or whatever mm -hmm. this incel work uh, comes up and the reason why is because of the negative connotations and sort of the attachment to people who shoot up buildings and what, yeah. yada, 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 because of that. And the thing is like involuntarily celibate, no offense, I've probably had sex more than you and all your friends combined. Like why are yeah. you saying, you're calling me an involuntarily celibate person when I'm yeah. asking men to improve themselves. Like literally yeah. what you're saying isn't true. So you're painting, this is one of the craziest things when I'm like, Andrew promotes incel culture. And I'm like, Andrew has been with like a thousand women. I don't yeah. grasp this concept, but it, what it is is it's this brush that you can just paint people with to negate yeah. their point of view. To this idea that it's institutions that are causing these thoughts to propagate. It's, it's what's good for the institution, which is being... I mean, it's being managed, what, on an institutional level? On we're, a, talking on about a, uh, we're talking about dating apps and, and, and big tech when you say institutions. Universities, okay. governments. Got it. You know, okay, the, no, we're talking about universities. Got it. The dating apps, too. It's the, the way that they're structured promotes certain ideas and certain behavior. There are certain things that you're allowed to say and certain things you're not allowed to say. You can get banned for this and that. You can get a hate speech violation for saying that, hey, I think this is a thing that women do. And they go, oh, you hate women and you get a community guideline strike or whatever. There are forces against the spread of certain ideas and in favor of other ideas and it seems all in one direction you got to wonder why that would be it's it's almost like there's like a, a boy and a girl version of social media. Yes. It's like it, when I post things on YouTube, they they effortlessly sail, and I have to really kind of push on TikTok to get it going. Like sometimes I'll have good money weeks on TikTok because I'll post a certain thing that'll go viral, but then sometimes it tanks, and YouTube is still doing fine. It's just um even on YouTube where the audience is overwhelmingly male, they still are or did or will or whatever you know prevent a lot of things from being said. I think that there's there's I don't know if there's a way to quantify it, but it feels to me to be very much going in one direction in government and academia and, uh, and media and social media and so on and so forth. Well, exactly. So what they're doing in their minds is whether or not they consciously realize it, which I doubt, because I don't know how you could sleep at night if you were doing this consciously, but somewhere in their mind, they recognize that what we are saying is bad for their strategy. If, if men are pushed to be a certain way and women are pushed to be a certain way, which would make everything better, then that's bad for, like a lot of these guys, like you said, they kind of look like they're probably bottom feeders. They yeah. look like they're just kind of waiting in the shadows for a woman to make a mistake. And then it's like, that's the only way I can get attention. And they know what we're saying that we're really, we're encouraging people to be strong, to be better and make better choices, and then the world will be better. And they know somewhere that's bad for their strategy. And then what they consciously do, what comes out of their mouths is to say something just like this, the man bad on the phone. They, they know in this part of their brain that if they say this on the internet, then people will think this way about us and they'll never break out of this cycle. Of, yeah. Oh, that's bad. And so what do we do? Let's get him banned. And they'll never get to this point of like, well, what is that the right thing to do and how do I know? Because social media keeps people in this pit of unconsciousness all the time, which mm. is I don't know what to do about it. It's like it's taken over everything in the in the last what, fifteen years? Yeah. It's oh, like everything's I, changed I would, so much uh, in fifteen years. I would say from oh five, so the beginning of like 
uh, MySpace, and then it mm -hmm. kicks off in 08 when the Facebook app is on uh, the iPhone, and then 2011 with Instagram. I think those are kind of the three big points where you start seeing yeah. a lot of these changes happen. Uh, and, I, and by the way, I want to add some context. I know that after that tw that scale that shows 2018, that the number did come down and then went up again, I believe, in 2020 uh, because mm -hmm. of COVID. Uh, but the, the reality of the situation is when you compare men now to men previously, there is a greater cohort of men having no sexual options. That's a yeah. real thing. Even if you want to say it's a short-term issue that will be solved in the long term, that's a real thing that's happening. And oh, we've yeah. seen in previous societies that ends badly. So there is an issue. So to say that there is no crisis in dating, I am being told I am irresponsible for calling women delusional. I think it, to say that there is no crisis in dating is actually what's irresponsible. I had yeah. Dr. Richard Reeves and we asked him a question. We were like, you're an academic who's actually discussing this disparity between men and women when it comes to jobs and family and dating and et cetera. Why do you you think Andrew became so popular and he, his expression was became popular because we in academia weren't willing to have this discussion mm -hmm. and because of that there was a void we pretended that these this cohort of men who were not involved in short-term dating we pretended like either they didn't exist or because they're a privileged class their suffering didn't matter or it didn't matter yeah. as much, and so the discussion about them, why are men suffering in this? The pe the women in the in the women's study group would come over and protest your your college course if you had a, a college course called yeah. Why Are Men Suffering in Dating? Imagine if there was yeah. a, a call, psychology one one. Why are men suffering in dating? Imagine what would happen if you were to have yeah. a course like that. And so yeah. and so because of that, because of that level of inequity, that's essentially you know where we how we ended up in the situation we're in now. Yeah, and that was what I referred to uh, that attitude that they use. Um, to to you know prevent you from talking about why are men suffering? W what I refer to it as is uh, everything I don't like causes mass shootings. Yes, I, lo I love that yeah. one. Everything you do, yeah. everything I, I stole that one. I used that the other day. Anything you don't oh, yeah. agree with me about it causes mass shootings. Yeah, and it's always it's always well you're making incels angry and you're spreading this and you're spreading that and it's like yeah really I'm really just trying to get people to see what's going on with themselves so that we don't so we don't so, keep so recreating these problems. Here's my favorite part: if if by some miracle Mackin or Date Psych ever watch this video, I want you to understand this. Go mm -hmm. back and read the last chapter of the Evolution of Desire by David Buss. Specifically, yeah. what he states in there is there are people who attack him and state. Even if what you're saying is true, you shouldn't talk about it because it might be damaging to society. And his yeah. response is, it is better to know the truth so that we can work, we can become aware of what our internal evolutionary proclivities are so we can work through them. Okay. Argue with David Buss because yeah. these are truths. And even if you think, well, he's like, well, he's like, why are you even concerned about this, bro? Like when you say that. We're concerned because it's the truth. Objective truth exactly. is something you should be concerned about, even if it could in the short term have a deleterious effect. Are there some incels that are going to use these videos to, to, to propagate their ideas? For sure. Absolutely. But that's not yeah. the majority of people. It isn't the majority of people.